Acts 28, 23. Is that right? We know that's where a lot of conflict is. We got our own righteousness. Amen. All right, a few more scriptures, we'll be finished. And when they had appointed him a day, there came many unto him into his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God. What? <laughs> Y'all see this? Persuading them concerning Jesus. See, today they call this deceit. You haven't noticed that all the so-called quote-unquote religious people today, how that there's like a spiritual stop over their mouths to even say the name Jesus? I'm talking Nazarenes, churches, Church of Christ, Baptists, Pentecostals, Methodists. All of a sudden, they don't even want to say the name Jesus nowadays. They're almost ashamed to say it. Antichrist. The spirit of error. It's already working. Hmm? He's here big time now. Amen. Now they tell us that the name of Jesus is pagan. Isn't that something? Hmm? He had to say we're still healing the sick. In Jesus' name. He's doing it. We know who's doing it. Got to use a vehicle to do it. But we know who's doing it. We're casting out those. We know who's doing it. If you don't believe we cast right there, I ask all them folks who've been down here. They'll tell you. <laughs> There's that guy in Texas. <laughs> all the people down there, they had to concede the devil. They even knew it was devil. Why are you even telling them? <laughs> One person went around and said, they, they looked at him and was testifying and said, man, he cast a demon out of that guy over there in that, in that, in that hotel. <laughs> I just said, look. <laughs> The kingdom is not to you when that happens, brother and sister. See, God has had mercy on us. And we have to continue to increase in his kingdom. Because there ain't going to be no end. Amen. But look what he did. He persuaded them concerning Jesus, both out of the what? Law of Moses. You know what? You notice I keep striving around here that you're going to have to learn how to be able to break it down over at Moses. From Moses all in. You're going to have to. And out of the prophets, from morning till evening. Now that's some preaching. That's some preaching. Huh? That's 12 solid hours of preaching. Look at them looking. Huh? And that's some listening. That's some, that's some, man, that's, that's, you talking about being captive. Man, today we in church an hour and 30 minutes. We start breaking down, don't we? Huh? Out there, they break down in 15 minutes. Yes, sir. Same 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Read a program, say a few amens, read a few letters. Preacher, get up, read four scriptures and say a few words, exhortation. Time search church. Got to pay a light bill. That's the way it is out there. How you know I've been out there? See, we can't allow this spirit to creep in here. We got to love God's word. You know, we ain't did too many morning until evenings. We hit it a few times. Amen. But these people had an attitude where they wanted to know. And they was learning. Uh-oh. Amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. That's all right. This is the truth anyway. Acts 28, 31. Preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. Now, I gave y'all these scriptures like you just read these um, for purpose of that you would read before and after. Because you need to know what they were talking about. You go back and do that. Because it's bigger than what we can um, go over with in one night. Luke eleven twenty. But if I, with the finger of God, cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God has come upon you. You hear that? Luke 10, 9. And he and heal the sick that are therein, and say unto them, The kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. Isn't that something? Luke 9, 2. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. 
So you see, brothers and sisters, not only am I just pressing toward, you know, it's one thing, it's nice to have deliverance. It really is. And all this, but, and it's nice to see us getting healed. You know, healing, you know, that we, we know the difference between miracle and healing, right? Yeah. Miracle is instantaneously, take place right then and there, and the healing is a, over a process of time. Is that right? Yeah. Hmm? And we're looking forward to, and we know that hey, a lot of times that the way you can heal somebody, you got to get demons out of them. Yeah. Right. And they end up getting healed. Right. Of course, our mind's so cardinal and natural minded that we can't see these spiritual demons. And so, therefore, we try to use our stupid wisdom. Mm -hmm. Try to say we know. Yes, sir. And try to say, oh, there ain't no demon. That's just you. You know how this professor does. Tries to reason. But our God is good. Matthew 28, Matthew 12, 28. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Did you hear that? Now, Matthew 19, 24. And again, I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Now, who said that? Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Now, look what he says right here. And there's a lot of people they are. They're getting it taken away from them. Huh? Matthew 21, 43. Therefore, I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruit thereof. Now, where you, where you say that? Where you use that one for, Pastor? Dow? Well, I'm trying to tell you. If you are in the kingdom and you're not bringing any fruits, God going to take it away from you. And he's going to give it to another people. That's what nations are. To bring forth fruit thereof. Because remember, he's all about producing. He wants an increase. If he give you something, he wants some usury. He, he, yeah, he does. He wants some interest. Y'all hear yeah, amen? That's the way the kingdom operates. You can't just say, okay, I'm in the kingdom and... Like this spirit tried to teach it. No, no. No, no. No. I promise you, brothers and sisters, you know, you can get rid of a lot of these spirits that have conflict with God's word if you just read his word and believe it. Amen. 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 Repent and believe the gospel. Amen. Amen. Mark 10, 15. Verily I send to you, for whosoever, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. Amen. And then Mark 10, 24, we'll finish on that one. And his disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answered again and said unto them, children, you hear what he said? Children, talking to who? His disciples. Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? Well, what's the riches they're trusting in? It surely ain't them up there. It's the riches of this world. That's why he tells, love not the world, neither the things that are in this world. I hope you have the ears to hear. Now, I'd love to see you in the kingdom, but I ain't looking for you. Hmm? I used to tell people a long time ago, early on in church, I hadn't all this mentioned in years. Long, a lot of years around here. Hmm? I had a vision a long, long time ago. I don't understand all the visions. I really don't. But the whole story, that the end of that vision was, is that I was on top of a mountain. Kind of like a spreak of a cream at the bottom, and people was climbing a mountain. And then Jesus came. And everybody that was with me on top of that mountain, we went on up in the glory. Amen. That was a vision I had. Hmm? Now the first part of the vision I understand because in that vision, I didn't see Chuck and Liz.